What's up guys? Sound Alchemist here with Gersh1. And we're back at it to answer your questions in another episode of For the Greater Wah. This is a video series where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question, comment down below. Put question in front of your question and we'll answer it next week. That is what Travis Teig said, did. He did. Uh, he asks, this is a really long one. I'm not going to paraphrase it. I'll just read it, I guess. We all know that the Primarchs were made to be second only to the Emperor himself and were the greatest soldiers humanity had to offer. Yes. However, thanks to chaos, we now have the Demon Primarchs. Gilliman did survive his fight with Magnus, but realistically, if it were a one-on-one -on -one fight, Gilliman would have died. My question is, since the Demon Primarchs are far more powerful than far more powerful now thanks to the chaos blessings what's the best way for the imperium to combat them especially since gilliman is the only loyalist primarch that's returned and especially with mortarion is returning as well thank you guys love the channel keep up keep making great content thanks man yeah so yes um in the big scheme of things uh demon primarchs are supposed to be stronger than regular, regular primarchs but you don't they you they you forget to take into account the reality that the emperor still protects them. He's still in the warp. He's still um, empowering them, just like he would empower any Imperium of Man fighter, right? Right. Um, basically, they're not fighting for themselves. They've got a greater purpose. They're here to protect the emperor, and that means fighting against all odds, and usually coming out on top because of plot. Exactly. Plot. Yeah. Plot armor. Plot armor is a big thing. Uh, but you see that everywhere. So it's um, um, it's something that's always going to come up whenever they battle. So like, let's right. say, even if Gilliman is losing to Mortarion in the future, the God Emperor is going to somehow like send some sword for him to use to defeat, or his burning sword will burn hotter or something right. crazy like that. It's, it's always going to be, I, I feel like, tactics and firepower are gonna be on the Imperium side, whereas Chaos, they're gonna have one strong mofo, but they're gonna get surrounded or something's gonna happen. Uh, their, their link to the warp will get weakened somehow, and that's how they're gonna get beat. Yep, and that's actually a good uh, answer to the question, how do you beat these Chaos um, Demon Primarchs? Well, you hit them where it hurts, which is their connection to the warp, and which is their just um, thirst for greatness, I right. guess. Use that to your advantage and be more tactical. Um, and that's what Gilliman's probably going to end up doing with his Indominus Crusade. Be more tactful uh, while Perturabo might send legion upon legion of like plague marines, zombies, Mort whatever. Mortarian. Oh, Mortarian, yeah. there you go. Gilliman would, you know, have his Primaris Marines. And that is, strategic. That's, that's exactly what happened in the uh, Rise of the Primarch when Gilliman was going one-on-one -on -one against Magnus. Magnus was whooping his butt. It wasn't until the Sisters of Silence came in that took away Magnus' psychic powers that Gilliman was taking the upper hand. So with Mortarion coming back, I really do think that Drago will come out of the warp and be the one to like slay him. So the Grey Knights are pivotal against these demon primarchs, especially when they're you know meant to fight demons. So. Primaris Grey Knights. All day, every day. <laughs> That's right. Next question. Maladin Lonut, how strong is Terra defended? Extremely. It's probably the most fortified place next to... No, I think it's even it more is. fortified than uh, Kamara. Oh. oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. In my opinion, that is the toughest place to go to, uh, to actually, you know, to see the Emperor. You're never going to make it. No. The line's too long. <laughs> yeah. Um, next question comes from Az Azero. A zero. <laughs> what if a Titan or Imperial Knight killed Lucius the Eternal? Cool. Well, probably the, the pilot of the, the Knight would become Lucius. And thus, the Titan. Well, because they're linked somehow, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the Titan would probably become all warp and fused. Yeah, and chaotic. Yeah. Next question. <clears throat> Ostang Vulcan. Uh, do you guys think that Jagtai Khan will return? Yeah, at some point. Yeah, he's, he's bound to come back. He's, uh, he's out there beating the Dark Eldar and riding his, uh, his bike. But 
You gotta make that U-turn. He's gotta come back. Yeah. Will has got to go fast. He asks, what happens to the deceased space marines that fall in the Xenos or heretic hands? Um, so a lot of them are, if it's chaos, they take them, take that gene seed, use it to corrupt other, mm -hmm. um, you know, would-be space marines or whatever. Um, but sometimes they're just like, you know, use this trophies. Orcs cut off the heads off of the space marines and put them in their little banners and stuff like that. Yeah, a lot of times their weapons, their armor gets looted. Um, so yeah, you could use the dead bodies for like rituals, sacrifices, that kind of thing. Yep, and then there is stories of the Tau who actually uh, take space marines and they try to like, you know, figure out how the um, armor works and, and all that kind of stuff. Yep. Next question. Uh, Jeffrey Williams. What is the average life expectancy for a space marine? Bearing illness or injury, are they still functionally immortal? We talked about this before. They do age. Yeah, very slowly. Extremely. Yeah, because they're superhuman, so it's a uh, super life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But they're, I don't think they age, or I don't think they can live as long as an Eldar, right? I you, doubt would it. Would you agree? Yeah, Eldar, they live for like thousands. thousands and thousands of years. Yeah, some of them are still, well, a lot of them are still around from the fall, mm -hmm. because after the fall, they can't reproduce, so yeah. it's hard for them to reproduce, so right. a lot of them are, you know, yeah. OGs. That shows you how old they are. Yeah. Next question comes from Tembris Tempestum. Do you think someday Gersh One, you misspelled my name, <laughs> and Sound Alchemist will sit on opposite sides during your video? No. Mm -mm. No, I doubt it. Also, does the Imperium of Man ever observe religious holidays of any kind? Do they take Sundays off? <laughs> so I don't know about Sundays, but they do have the the is it the day of the Emperor's Ascension? There you go. Yeah, I think that's that's their Christmas basically. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's when the Emperor rides a sleigh um, pulled by a bunch of cyber mastiffs and he delivers goodies to children and boys. Only the good boys who kill at least 10 Xenos and burn 5 heretics. And that's not a lot, so yeah. you're probably gonna get coal. <laughs> this one's by Irish Bear. Hey guys, love everything you guys do. Everything? Whoa. That's, that's a lot. Keep up the great work. For Sound Alchemist, what are good melee units for the Tau besides using auxiliary units like the Crews? Um, Farsight? Yeah, you use Farsight a lot. Mm -hmm. And he is a really tough uh, close combat guy. Uh, oh, we always try to kill him from afar. I don't think I've ever gone into melee with him because I learned like throwing an, uh, a unit of knobs mm -hmm. into Farsight. Farsight will destroy the knobs. Yeah. They weren't mega armor knobs or anything, but... Mega armor knobs would probably get him stuck in. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. And he continues on to say, Is the Silent King from the Necrons going to have any new role with him coming back from his exile to fight the Tyranids? Um, not, not anytime soon, because I feel that uh, GW is paying so much attention to the Imperium, and you, if in order to talk about the Silent King, you have to tie him into the Imperium. Right. And like you said, right now, he's, he's more worried about the Tyranids than he's worried about anything else. Right. So we probably won't see him for a long time. Which kind of sucks, but maybe when the new Net Necron Codex gets released, they'll have, there'll be a little bit more of lore for him there. Yeah. Next question comes from Rogel Dorn. Oh. The Protector of Terra. Say you lost a body part, and the Admech offered to make you a replacement. What body part would it be? And what, did it, what, did, what are its capabilities, if any would, if any would it have? You get it. <laughs> Um, all right, I, I saw this one like a while back, so I've been kind of having it marinate in my mind, and I think I'll have a elbow replaced, not the arm though, just the elbow, because people won't see that coming. So if anybody comes up to me, bam, I'll throw them bows. I thought you meant like because the elbow would be like so like you're you're doing something or whatever, and like you're fight you're fighting in close combat, and then they don't know that your elbow bends like 360 <laughs> degrees, so you're just like instead of punching them like this. You do some crazy stuff where it like flips around and hits them. That too, like a flamingo elbow. Mm -hmm. You should have. You should. You should. Oh, I would do an elbow. No, I would do a forearm. Oh. And I would put razor blades along my forearm, so when I like stop a, a blade, I could stop it like that, and then I can come with the other one and cut them in the face with my razor blades. It's cool. So it'd be like shark shark skin. 
Yep. Smooth if you go one way, but dangerous if you go the other. Yeah. It would also double as a cheese grater. <laughs> nice. That's what I would do. Uh, just out of curiosity, I wonder what you guys responded. Let's see, let's see. Uh... <laughs> a power fist for you, my friend. Uh, somebody said a cybernetic dick that would fire bolt rounds. Cool. We're gonna leave it at that. Next question. <laughs> uh, this one's by Spectre of Doom YT. Given his already significant psychic ability and number of sentient beings that outright worship him as a god, is it possible that when he eventually dies, the emperor transits into the immaterium and becomes a being on the scale of the chaos gods? Yes, it is. Then we're gonna create a 40 facts for that. Hold tight. But as of right now, um, yeah, the possibilities of that becoming true, I think, are pretty big. Mm -hmm. If GW does take that route, they have to take into account, though, that for at least, you know, a split second, there's going to be a fucking warp gate into Terra, right. and, and hell is going to break loose on Terra. So be ready to, like, do some post-apocalyptic Terran battle. Yeah. Like Necromunda, but on Terra. <laughs> Next question comes from Daniel Nogera. What would happen if a pariah, a blank, entered the warp? The same thing that if the Tyranids entered the warp, they'd yeah. just be like a bubble. Mm -hmm. Like, next time you're drinking milk, chocolate milk, grab a straw, blow into the chocolate milk, and you'll see like little air bubbles coming up. Those are the pariah going into the warp. The milk represents the warp, and the bubbles rep represents the blanks. The null zone. The nulls. Next question. This one is by the homie, Dragon Punch 903 What are the chances of a citizen actually seeing a space marine? Very, very rare. Which is kind of funny. Yeah. Um, it's like space marines are the most prevalent army in 40k. Like, you see them everywhere. Everybody has space marines. You know what they are. But regular humies don't ever see them. Yeah, it's kind of like Star Wars and Jedi. Like, whenever... Well, when that one game came out where, like, you can be anything you you want to be in the Star Wars universe and it's like a free world what was it called? Uh, uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, but it was like a it's like an online game. Knights of the Old Republic. Yeah, yeah. Everybody was a Jedi. So it was like that's very unrealistic. <laughs> yeah. Um same thing with Warhammer 40K. Space Marines are a myth. Like you never see them. Mm -hmm. And when you do see them you're like shocked. Yeah, it's like, "Oh man, you know, legends come true." Yeah. That's like if we saw like Hercules or something like that. Yeah. We find out Superman's real. Yeah. Next question. Uh, I have one from John Redcorn. What are your top Warhammer conspiracy theories? And also, can you guys sing R. Kelly Ignition Remix? Since we're drinking to this video. Well, right now, R. Kelly's not in a great position, so... We don't want to uh, bring that to our channel. Uh, we're just not going to talk about R. Kelly. Neil, on the other hand, though, well, is he the one that's, I have an icebox where my heart used to be? Is that is that Neo? I think that's Neo. Okay, well, there you go. Yeah. Um, favorite conspiracy theory? There are lizards uh, taking care, taking like control of the world. No, but Warhammer <laughs> conspiracy. Theory. There are lizards taking control of the world. <laughs> Those are green skins. Oh, it's not a conspiracy. It's it's reality. It's the law. Well, I was thinking of the old ones. The, the lizard men. Oh, that they're behind? Yeah. I doubt it, but I've, I've heard it, and it's it's far out. It's crazy. It's out there, but... I like the conspiracy theory that the old ones are the reason that the Tyranids are coming to um, the galaxy. Like, the old ones are sending the Tyranids to wash away anything uh, that was, you know, bad or whatever. Because the they want to... Yeah, they want to cleanse the the. They're like the, the galaxy, basically, so that the warp can go away, Necrons can go away, and then they can come back. You know, set up shop once again. Gotcha. gotcha. Uh, but I also like the theory that the God Emperor is actually a demon. Didn't we cover that? We did. Yeah. We might do a forty facts video on it someday because it was a Greater Wall episode, I believe. Someday. Next question. All might. Would you guys rather become a demon prince? But have to follow your patron's god's every order for all eternity, or be a regular marine with no chaos gifts, but still have your freedom, somewhat. 
a marine. I'm a superhuman. That'd be freaking awesome. But you're like the lowest of the low in chaos, cause like you don't. You're just a regular marine with no like gifts or anything. Kind of like the uh, the black no the black legion no the alpha legion. They don't worship any gods. They're not like. Oh, I get what you're what he's saying. I get what he's saying. Okay, okay. Um, no, yeah, I would still do the chaos marine because I still feel that a regular chaos marine, like not any like additional powers or whatever, they have more free will than even a space marine because a space marine gets brainwashed yeah everything from your past goes away you are a new being and that being isn't even um well i should do a horrible realities of being a space marine because <laughs> it does suck if you think about it like as a space marine you die Basically. if you go to become a space marine you die and then you get brought back to life essentially yeah that's somebody else right that space marine is somebody completely different than you uh, where it's like a chaos marine, I feel like you can somehow get those um, personality characteristics back because chaos allows it. Right. What about you? Uh, Demon Primarch, definitely. Just to be this hulking monstrosity of power, to have minions around you, sometimes even have your own planet to yourself. Like, that's pretty cool. Especially yeah. if you're Slanesh. Hey. You squashed my, <laughs> my answer. The, the great realities of being a demon prince. Yeah. <laughs> All right, last question. All right, last one. This is so me. Every chapters will get Primaris Marines, or will every chapter get Primaris Marines, or just the founding chapters, or will Papa Smurf merge these into the original chapters? Uh, everybody. Everybody getting them. Yeah. Uh, and second, third founding, Lost Legions, all of them. Cursed get founding. Yeah. yeah. They all get them. Yeah. Um, it's like Oprah. You, know, you get a car, and you get a car. You get Primaris. Everybody gets Primaris. Yeah. Um, but the whole story is that they're not actually Marines from that chapter. They're auxiliaries. Right. So, yeah, keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. And those were the questions for this week. If you guys have more questions, please comment down below. That's right. We answer these three times a week. So if we didn't get to them today, answer it again in the comments, and maybe we'll get it tomorrow or next week. Um, as always, he is Gersh One. I'm the Sound Alchemist. We are One Mind Syndicate, and we are out of here.